Hi, this is Peter from The Movable Chef. Just continuing the coffee theme this week, I want to talk about what would be the greatest coffee maker for traveling if only you could buy one. And that is this little Stella Mocha Pot. I believe it's a Stella Brevitata. Um, and it's similar to the Mocha Pot in, in sort of function and operation that I reviewed earlier this week, the Bialette Mocha Express. The difference is this has its very own self-contained alcohol lamp underneath it which means that all you really need to make coffee on the road is some coffee and some water and a match, which sounds great. Um, I'm gonna take this to the countertop and give you a, a more thorough review of it and show you how it works right now. So let's take a look at this thing. I suspect that this is probably from the 1940s, maybe the early 1950s. Uh, the top unscrews, it's got this pressure clamp that holds the lid on. And you remove that, which allows access to the actual uh, brew chamber where the coffee goes. And he's got that similar mocha pot style coffee filter or funnel. Um, it's got uh, the upper dome part where the coffee comes out as expressed through. And it has um, the, the sort of standard mocha pot little filter. The coffee goes in here. This lid goes on the top since, as opposed to being made into the bottom here and uh, the water goes in the base. And then the difference is that this has the alcohol lamp here at the bottom, which has a reservoir for alcohol and um, a little wick, which allows that to, to burn. And uh, stove alcohol burns very cleanly, so you don't get a lot of soot or smell out of it, which is good. Um, and then you could brew either one cup or two by uh, unscrewing this little diverter at the bottom so you can make a single cup at a time and uh, or make two cups at a time it's a two cup pot so that's how it comes apart you've got the same gasket issue that you have with a mocha pot um, this is actually a Bialetti gasket I've crammed in there which seems to work for the moment and uh, and it's a neat little contraption uh, and you can see these for sale every now and then on on eBay and they, they kind of command a price um, I've certainly paid enough for this one um, I don't actually use it to make coffee, and I wish I could, but um, if you can see inside here, you can see the inside, there's a couple solder points here on the side. And I think some previous owner uh, boiled this thing dry, they let the alcohol lamp keep going without uh, any water in it, and that has dripped solder down into the base of the water chamber. Now, I don't know if that's silver solder uh, or if it's lead solder. I would hope it would be silver solder, it'd be food grade, and then I could use it. Um, I haven't had it tested, and uh, I'm kind of suspect it could very well be lead, which is kind of off-putting. Um, the other reasons why uh, they don't currently make these, I suspect, is that it uses this for fuel, alcohol stove fuel. This stuff burns very, very hot. Um, in certain circumstances, when it's burning, the flame can be almost invisible. Um, and when it spills, it's, it really just gets all over the place. Uh, if there's any kind of ignition source nearby, it, it flames up. It, it's a reasonably dangerous fuel. Um, this isn't a pressurized alcohol burner, which is somewhat safer, uh, but uh, if you spill this stuff, it's gonna take the finish off whatever you spill it on, um, and if it gets lit, then you can have a, a, a nearly invisible, very, very hot flame. Uh, the other reason why I suspect this isn't being made in a similar fashion is, Notice there's no safety valve here, like there was on the Bialette. Uh, so it'd be very possible for this to sit over its alcohol stove with no water or very little water, a pressure build up in the filter basket, and, and bad things could happen. So that's probably why they're not being made. It's why we can't have nice things. But I'm going to go ahead and use it right now, taking my life in my hands, and uh, I will brew some coffee with this, although because of that solder issue, um, I'm not going to drink the coffee. Um, so I'll just use... Uh, some kind of old worn out espresso I've got sitting around rather than using the good stuff. So I'll come back with the implements to fill and, uh, and uh, light this and we'll see how it works. All right, so I've got water in the bottom chamber up to about where the arm comes swivels down. It seemed to be about the right level. I've filled the filter with coffee. Um, not quite an espresso ground, but pretty close. That mocha pot grind I was talking about. And then this little top filter just sits on top there. This gets dropped inside. The top part of that chamber 
sits on top, and then gets clamped down so it can uh, withstand the pressure, uh, although hopefully limited pressure, of brewing. And then your cup, or in this case I'm using a glass so we can see the coffee, uh, just sits right under the spout. And then you just light that alcohol wick. You can see that kind of energetically burning, you can hear it burning, a little moisture on it. And uh, that will heat that water up to a boil in a relatively short time. And it'll start brewing coffee. So let's check back in just a minute. All right, so it's been about two minutes and coffee has just started flowing from the spout. You can see it's starting off as a steady drip there. And it's producing a, a pretty nice looking output. Um, it's not super muddy yet. Um, it's uh, very, very dark, a little viscous. Uh, we're getting a pretty good result from this brew. Uh, so now that it started to brew, what we're hoping for is for this to finish brewing pretty quickly. You want to get that coffee extracted through. I mean, the ideal would be in 30 to 45 seconds. Uh, we'll see if we can, we can hit that or not. But that alcohol lamp certainly has a lot of energy. I mean, that's a very hot flame. It's burning nice and blue right now. So uh, we should see if we can get this out. And I'll check back in just a second. All right, and it's just finishing off with that final rush of steam and, and coffee spewing forth. And that should be just about all of it. So now the question is, what do we do with that alcohol flame which is burning underneath the, uh, the coffee maker? And uh, it, it would be very difficult to get this little uh, silver or tin lid back on it and screw it down with the, the flame on because it's so hot. Uh, we can just try and blow it out. And that seemed to work. So we now have a uh, two cups of, uh, probably two three ounce cups of mocha pot coffee, which has been brewed. And, uh, and this little thing is finished and hot. So it's probably not lead solder, right? It's probably silver. You know, it's not bad. Considering I used old espresso beans and um, that uh, I never actually brew coffee in this thing. Uh, it's a little bit bitter, but it's just a pretty good cup of mocha pot coffee. So I wish there was a modern version of this. Um, there isn't that I'm aware of. And if you happen to see one of these on eBay or um, some collector site, and you think you would like the look of it sitting on your countertop or on your shelves, go for it. Um, at the same time, I wouldn't plan on making a lot of coffee with this thing. If it has anything like the problems that mine does with that sort of you know, mystery solder drips and uh, hard to find gaskets and what have you, um, it, it's probably more of a, of a showpiece at this point than it is a practical solution to making coffee on the road. But I really love this thing. I think it's really cool. This has been Peter with Movable Chef. Uh, for more on this uh, particular coffee pot, and uh, more different uh, ways of making and, uh, and enjoying coffee and uh, other items. Check back with us on our website, themovablechef.com.